Thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. I shared about the expectation of hope Sunday, and I want to kind of jump back in this and kind of expand on it a little bit tonight and share some other things with you about this, because hope is your lifeline. It's, it's what anchors you. And uh, you say, well, it's faith. Well, that's true, but faith is a substance of things hoped for. Amen? So it says in Mark chapter 5 that one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw Jesus, verse 22, Mark chapter 5, when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years, and had suffered many things, from many physicians, she has spent all that she had, but was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be well. Now, you know, if you're not careful, you'll get this out of sequence. If you read this in sequence... Here's what, she, what happened. It says she, was, re, she uh, was nothing better but grew worse. But when she came, when she heard about Jesus, she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Then she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For, <clears throat> and it says immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? That has always been an amazing statement for me. Because it, it, makes, it, it makes it clear that Jesus is not looking for you. You don't have to go try to get him to find you. All you have to do is touch him where he is. It's not a matter of trying to get him to do something. It's just a matter of touching him. It's just a matter of that, the power of the Holy Spirit in that moment, in that time, when faith rises and you touch Jesus. You touch him by faith. You touch him by his word. You respond and Jesus works in your life. So it says that power flowed out of him into her, and immediately she was totally, completely healed of her affliction. And then it says that Jesus spoke to her and said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Her faith made her well. But listen to me tonight. It didn't start with faith. Because she didn't know about faith until she heard about Jesus. Okay? So what kept her going was hope. I'm not going to give up hope. I'm, gonna, I'm expecting something to happen. We don't know. We talked about this Sunday. We don't even know whether she was a religious person. We don't know whether she was even Jewish or not. All we know is that this woman was willing to spend every dime she had to get better. She wasn't willing to quit, wasn't willing to get up and was give up and was desperate enough to take her own life in her hands to get healed because being unclean with a flow of blood in her body, out discharging from her body, she could, come, she could not come in a crowd, much less by the priest who was walking with Jesus. That was an abomination. 
she had to clear the crowd by crying out, unclean, unclean. But she didn't do that. She heard about Jesus. And something transformed when she heard. What happened? Faith gave substance to what she'd hoped for. All of a sudden, those expectations, those things that she was expecting, all of a sudden it was stronger than that. It was, a, it was, a, it was faith, and she was bold enough to push right in the midst and touch Jesus, and power flowed out. So hope is a powerful thing. Just having an expectation is a powerful thing. Well, you know, all hope was gone. When? When you take your last breath. Until then, you can't hope, you can't expect, you can know that God will work, that God can do something in your life. And I want to talk to you a little bit about this tonight because this woman had, had hope before she had faith and literally, we talked about this Sunday, but faith, not faith, but hope attracted her answer. Just hoping, expecting God to do, expecting something to happen, attracted the answer from God. She still had to operate by faith. She still had to act by faith. But the thing you have to understand is, listen to me, I don't care how long you've been believing how long you've been standing, what you're hoping for, and it doesn't seem like it's going to happen, don't quit. Because that, listen to me, listen, if you keep expecting God to do something, if you keep that hope alive, the answer will come. The answer will come. It may not look exactly like you picture you painted in your mind, but that doesn't mean it's not going to come. But now let's talk about this for, for a little bit tonight so, so you can understand a little bit about hope. In Proverbs chapter 13, in verse 12, it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. All right, listen. Hope deferred. That word deferred there means put off or neglected. Neglected. Sometimes time erodes our confidence in our hope. And I'm going to show you how to change that tonight. But, but, and so you neglect it. Well, you know, I used to really expect something to happen, and, well, I kind of do now, and sort of, but, you know, it's been so long. Or so many things have happened, or circumstances have changed, or, or whatever it may be. So you neglect hope. You know, it's easy, listen to me, just to live life and just take what it comes and have no expectations. I know people that live that way. I know Christian people who live that way. I don't ever want to be there. I don't want to, number one, I don't want to ever be at a point where I'm satisfied enough to where, hey, whatever. I'm expecting. I've got my expector out there. I am hoping God's going to do some things. And see, Sometimes that sounds like a bad word, but it's not. Well, how come you're not believing? You're just hoping. Well, I'm expecting. That's what that word means. I'm expecting God to do something. I'm expecting something. And then you get to a point where faith rises up out of that. And I'm going to show you this. But, but if you don't have some kind of expectation, I mean, look at your life, okay? And think about the things in your life that you don't like. Are you expecting them to change? Or is, listen to me, or are you deferring that? Are you neglecting that and living with it? 
It's going to make your heart sick. Hope deferred, hope neglected makes your heart sick. Now the word there, really, it really means to be weak or discouraged. When you neglect hope, you get weak spiritually and you get discouraged. Hope keeps the flame alive in your life. Hope keeps an expectation there that God's going to do something and something's going to happen and, and, and there's an answer and, and, and you're not going to quit and you're not going to give up and you're going to see that answer in your life. And sometimes people just, they, they just quit expecting anything to happen. They've had a lot of bad things in their lives, a lot of bad things happen, and so they just quit expecting anything good to happen. And you know what? Nothing happens because you're not attracting anything. <laughs> you're not attracting anything by your expectations. Listen, it says hope that's neglected makes your heart weak and discouraged. And listen to me, half of believing is with your heart. With the heart man believes, and with the mouth confession is made. So half of faith is gone right there. Because your heart's sick. Your heart's weak. You're not willing to even give it a chance. Because there's no expectation there. Y'all awake? Without hope, you can't believe. We said it already. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you ain't got anything hoping out there, how, what you going to attach your faith to? How are you going to get hooked up? How could God say, okay, you've been expecting this. Now, if you'll do this, this, and this, it'll happen. That's where your faith hooks up with your hope. You can expect something, and all of a sudden, God says, now do this. And the moment you do that, faith is attached to that hope, and you get results. That's where we want to live our lives. But, but the, the thing you've got to hear is it starts with hope. We're just expecting something, expecting something better. I've always been a hopeful person. You know, even when I, even before I got saved, I was a hopeful person. I expected things to happen. You know, I was raised, and most of you, if you've been in the church very long, know I was raised in an alcoholic home. My parents were alcoholics, and, and uh, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't very pleasant sometimes. But my expectations were far greater than what anybody else expected out of me. Now, don't misunderstand me. You know, but, but I had more expectations for myself. You know, I, I wasn't going to graduate from high school and go sit in a bar with, with my dad. That's not what I wanted to do. So I had, I had different expectations. Now, and what's amazing about that is I never fulfilled any of those expectations until I got saved. Isn't that funny? Even though I had them way back when, after I got saved, it's when all those expectations started being fulfilled in my life. Because really, to be honest with you, hope is a commodity that anybody can use. So you say, well, Pastor, you know, I just don't see anything uh, to get hooked up with. I don't see God moving in any way. Well, let me give you an example that will help you with this, all right? Over in Romans chapter 4, there's a man there by the name of Abraham. The Bible says that Abraham was the father of our faith. And God gave him a word, a 
about his future when he was an old man. When his wife was old, Abraham, you're going to have a son. Naturally speaking, no way. The Bible, you read on here, it talks about it. He, didn't, he couldn't consider his body and he couldn't consider Sarah's body. They were past that in their lives. Okay, so God gave them that promise. But Abraham had something. Because, you know, every day he got up and looked at the same body and looked at his wife and said, okay. <laughs> 25 years. Twenty-five years went by. Can you imagine how what you have to deal with when you're telling everybody you're going to have a child and everybody knows? But listen to what it says here in Romans chapter 4, verse 18, talking about Abraham. It says... Who contrary to hope, in hope, believed. Contrary to hope, in hope, believed. Now that, that sounds very, that's an unusual phrase there. But really, the, the one translation says it this way. When all hope was gone, Abraham hoped on in faith. He just wouldn't look at anything else. He just wouldn't expect anything else. Yeah, but you know you're too old. Well, you know you'll never get that job. Well, you'll know you'll never get out of, you know, do more than what you're doing now. Well, this isn't going to happen. Wait a minute. You have to keep hope alive, even when there seems to be no hope. You have to stay with it. Don't quit. Don't give up. I love the way it says this. Abraham hoped on in faith. How you just kept expecting. You know people talked behind his back and laughed at him. And, but he just kept expecting. Nothing to, nothing to validate it. Nothing whatsoever. But he just kept expecting, kept expecting, kept expecting. He just hoped, his hope was based on God's promises, and he wasn't going to quit. So here's, here's what you can do to keep hope alive in your life, okay? This will help you. Listen to what it says in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. 10. Let me read you this. Verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope Without wavering. Now that's a mouthful. First of all, you have to hold fast the confession of what you're expecting. The first thing the devil wants you to do is to shut your mouth and quit saying what you're believing and expecting. He wants to stop that. Well, that's just foolish. You've been saying that forever. Well, Abraham for 25 years said he was the father of many nations. That's what his name was. God changed his name from Abram to Abraham, father of many nations. So every time, what's your name, boy? Abraham. Yeah, where are your kids? You just smile. God will provide. Your confession, listen to me, of what you're expecting makes all the difference in the world. Some people ask, ah, just positive thinking. No, it's not. It's confession of expectation. What are you expecting? 
What is it that you're holding on to? If you will, listen to what it says, hold fast the confession of your hope. What is it you're hoping for? Now, the great thing about it is you start tying it into what God's Word says and what God promises, and all of a sudden you've got, you, you're making a three-fold cord that can't be broken. I mean, you, you're starting to weave something because you're saying not only what you're expecting, but you're saying what God says you can expect. Woo! All of a sudden you've got something working. Then you add faith to that. But it starts, listen to me, with you keeping your confession of what you expect strong. Don't back off of it. Don't give in. Don't give up on it. And if you stay with it, then all of a sudden things start working. Because listen to what it says here. I, I, I like this. This will help you. Listen to what it says. It says you've got to do it without wavering you know the Bible talks about a person who wavers it says they're unstable they're double minded and they, they, they get unstable but I tell you you find somebody that's not going to quit not quit confessing what they're expecting you know, it, it, it makes some people mad. They'll tell you all the negatives, and you say, yeah, but you know what? I'm expecting God to do something. I'm expecting, and they say, well, who do you think you are? <laughs> well, I'd much rather do that, yeah. believe that, confess that, hold on to that, declare that, Man. than to just go along with, oh, my God, everything's going to hell in the handbasket. Oh, it's terrible. It's bad. It's bad. Hey, you just can't get a job in Shreveport. You mean to tell me there's nobody working in Shreveport? How many of you got a job? Somebody's got a job. If they've got one, how come you can't have one? People look at things and they just get all confused and they start thinking, they just start expecting what everybody else expects. No. You've got to expect what God said he would do. Listen to what it says here. It says that not only do you hold fast the confession without wavering, it says for he who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful. Faithful to what? What he promises, what he says. So that means if you find something in the Bible that God's promised and said, you got something to hold on to. You got something to expect. You got something to say, you know what? This is what I expect. This is my confession. This is what I say. And just don't waver. That's a that's that's the part where people get they just waver. We've all done it. Don't look, I mean, we, we've all done it. We, but but the thing is you got to learn not to do it. Stay with it. Don't give up. Don't give in. Just stay in there. Stay with it. And I'm going to declare what God has promised. I'm going to declare what I'm expecting. And I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to back off of it. Because listen to what happens. Listen to this. It says, we read this already, but Proverbs uh, uh, 13, verse 12 says, But when the desire comes... Listen to this. It is a tree of life. In other words, when you get what you've been expecting, it does more than just satisfy a need. It becomes life-giving. It energizes you. You know what it really does? It gives you more hope. It gives you more hope. Now, this works best, and I know you're not going to want to hear this tonight, but this works best when you're challenged. 
This works. Listen to what it says over in Romans with me, chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Let's just begin at verse 1. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. We've got access into the grace of God by faith. All right, now listen to this. And we rejoice... In hope of the glory of God. My hope is to see God's glory revealed. Okay? My, my hope is that it's not just that, well, something's answered, but God's glory is revealed. Okay? But listen to verse 3. That's easy. Oh, yeah, we want the glory of God. I, you know, we want to rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And, still talking here, verse 3. And not only that, everybody wants to rejoice in the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Y'all still here? I didn't get a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Bible talks a lot about tribulation, trouble, trials, adversities, difficulties. All right, listen to this. Now, this is going to help you. Follow me here. Not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing, all right, knowing. You got to know something if you're going to glory in tribulation and you're going to rejoice in hope. Of the glory of God. You got to know something. What do you know? That tribulation produces perseverance. Now see, don't read anything into this. It doesn't mean God is putting you in tribulation so he can develop perseverance. This comes automatically, folks, with the territory. When you make Jesus the Lord of your life, it just comes with the territory. Challenges just come. So it says here, now listen, we glory in tribulation knowing, you got to know what I'm going to tell you here, you can't glory in tribulation. Okay, you're just going to be miserable if you don't hear this. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Now, that word there literally means cheerful, or hopeful endurance. Cheerful or hopeful endurance. You're not going to give up. You're not going to quit. You're going to stay with it. Really, uh, if you break this down, it means to stay under. Stay under. All right? So, you got to know this, all right? So, you got to know if you're going to glory and rejoice in hope of the glory of God, you've got to know that, when you, that, that tribulation produces a cheerful and a, and a hopeful endurance. All right, but now that's not all. Not only do you have to know that, but you also have to know and perseverance. Perseverance. You got it? Perseverance, now listen, and character. Now, the New King James calls this character, but when you look this word up in the Greek text, it doesn't mean character. You know what it means? It means experience. It means experience. How many of you got some experience at something? Okay. All right, so listen to this. Let's read this again, okay? So you got to know, if you're going to glory in tribulation, rejoice in hope of, for the glory of God in tribulation, then you got to know that tribulation produces 
Cheerful, hopeful endurance. And that produces experience. See, listen. I have experience now with tribulation. I've, I've been doing this a long time. I wish I could tell you that tribulation cease. <laughs> but they don't. But you learn how to deal with them on a different level. Because now I know something. Well, what do you know, Pastor? I know that if I stay with it, and I don't give up, and I don't quit, and I don't give in, and I keep my expectation, and I keep my hope, that I'm going to get some experience at this. And not only am I going to get some experience with this, it's going to produce more hope. See, you get it, you, listen, you get in over into a situation and you're, you're, you're expecting God to do something and, and it just seems like it gets worse. I mean, it just seems like it gets worse. And you know, you just say, you know what, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to hold fast the confession of my hope. I'm going to expect God to do something. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. Right in the middle of that tribulation, I'm going to be, I'm going to have hopeful endurance. And the next thing you know, God works in your life. And you gain some experience from that. It's all right, I got it now. All right, all right. I know now. I know that if I do this, God's going to work. And guess what? It gives you more hope. It gives you more hope. I'm a lot more hopeful today than I ever have been in my whole life. Why? Because I've got experience. I've got experience. But now listen to what else it says. And hope does not disappoint. Woo, I like that. Hope does not disappoint. One translation says, this hope will never this hope will never disappoint or make you ashamed. Another one says, hope cannot shame us in the day of our trials. Hope never disappoints. Nor does hope ever delude you, deceive you. Why? Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. We know now that God loves us. The greatest revelation you can have is God loves you. If you'll just expect God to do something and don't ever, the devil say, well, you know, you're not worthy. Well, you know, he don't care. Yeah, he does. He loves you. In fact, here's the great, great part of this, because Paul explains this. He said, for when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Do you know that Jesus died for you when you were ungodly? He didn't wait for you to get good. But now, for some reason, we think we got to be perfect for God to work in our lives. If he didn't care when you were ungodly and he sent his son, how much more now that you're one of his? <laughs> Listen to this. Much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, when you were an enemy, you were reconciled to God through his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Hope never disappoints because the love of God's been shed abroad in my heart. Now I know, I know God loves me. I know he loves me. I know you can't take it away from me. And if he loves me, now listen to me. If he loves me, and I don't give up hope, he is faithful to respond to my hope. 
He is faithful to act. It, it automatically comes with the territory. Listen to this. God's love for us transcends every, even our ability to hope for a favorable outcome. Beyond what we can even hope for. Let me read you this. This ought to encourage you. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Bible. Now to him who by and in consequence of the actions of his power that it is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. You're not taxing God one bit by your expectations. Infinitely beyond is where He is. And that's what He wants to do in your life. That's how He wants to work in your life. Hope, Hebrews 6, 19 says, hope is an anchor of the soul. You know, we talk about the Holy Spirit, and we talk about the things of the Spirit, and, and we need that, and we've got to have that. But you know, you live in a soulish world. We want to walk by the Spirit, but we still have that soulish world we have to deal with every day, don't we? Our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, all of, that's, all of that plays into our lives. And so hope is your anchor for that soul so it doesn't go tilt. So it doesn't, it doesn't just go crazy because you keep expecting God to move. You keep your focus on God. You keep your expectations real before God, and it anchors you. It anchors your mind. It anchors your, your expectations, but it also anchors your emotions because you've got something you're expecting. You've got something you're hoping for. In your life. And it anchors you. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope that is confessed and released and expected anchors you. Holds you steady. Maybe a storm going on on top, moving, you know, moving the boat, but that anchor holds you in place. Holds you where you need to be. So I, I want you to listen to me. I want to encourage you. Don't let that expectation for good go. Psalm 16, 9, Paul, uh, uh, David said this in Psalm 16, verse 9. He said, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also rests in hope. <laughs> Just rest in hope. I expect God. He's faithful. If you'll just hear that, He is faithful. I, I, I wrote a statement down here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna find it because I want you to uh, I want you to listen to this. I think it'll help you. And I, I've got to find it because I, I I wrote it not quickly, and I don't I don't remember exactly where I wrote it, but I'm gonna find it here real quick. Hang on a second. Hope expects God to be faithful. Faith acts on the faithfulness of God to His Word. See, hope just expects God to be faithful. But when faith is attached to that, all of a sudden, God, you, you said this. Now i got something more. There's, there's something stronger here. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a confidence now, because now I can act on what you said. See, there's a big difference. So what you have to do is let hope anchor your soul. Don't give up. Now, this is, this is one of my favorite scriptures. I read it Sunday, but listen to it. Oh, my soul, don't be discouraged. 
Don't be upset. Okay? Listen. Expect God to act. How? When? Where? Expect God to act. For I know that I shall again have plenty of reasons to praise Him for all that He will do. He is my help. He is my God. So, expect God to act. Anchor yourself. Expect God to do something. Expect God to act. And then you know what will happen? More often than not, He does super abundantly above Far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, hopes, and dreams. I am living a life that I never expected. I never expected. I've been all over the world. I preach the gospel all over the world, every continent, except Antarctica. Don't want to go there. <laughs> God, God, let me do that. Way beyond my expectations. I mean, back when I was in, in, in high school, if I got above the Mason-Dixon line, that was, that was going somewhere, man. I'm telling you. Some of you don't even know what the Mason-Dixon line is. <laughs> but. It's when you transition from the south to the north. <laughs> Amen. And I've lived in the south, and I've lived in the north, and I like the south a lot better. <laughs> Amen. I like it down here. Hey, but my point is, listen, your expectations or just a jumping off point for God to do great things in your life. Amen. They're, not, they're not the end of all. Well, I expected God, and God did that. No, he just, that's just the beginning. He wants to do abundantly above, Amen. over and above, way beyond, infinitely beyond your highest prayers, hopes, dreams. But he's got to have something to attach. And you know what that is? Hope. Anybody can hope. Make you a hope list. You know, like they have hope chest. No, they don't do that anymore, I don't guess, but make you a hope list. This is what I expect. And then just keep it before you. Lord, this is what I expect. Lord, this is what I expect. This is what I expect. I tell you, my kids had no chance of not marrying the right person. Because the moment they were born, my wife told God, this is what I expect. This is what I expect. This is what I'm hoping for. This is what I expect. You can do the same thing in your life. Those worst areas of your life, the ones that are just the dog worst, Anybody got any of those? Sure, we all do. The dog worst areas of your life, if you'll just make up your mind, I'm going to expect more. You see God do something awesome. Your, your life or your circumstances of life might be trying to dictate to you, no, that's not you. You know what that is? That's trying to steal your hope. Don't let the devil steal that from you. Learn to battle through that. And gain some experience and get some more hope. Because you'd be amazed at what God will do in your life. All you got to do is make up your mind you're going to do it. Amen. So, don't be discouraged. I believe I will have plenty of reasons to praise Him for all the things that He'll do. Why? He's my God. He's my help. I expect God to act. How about you? Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Stand up with me.
Hallelujah. I just hope you go home tonight encouraged. Amen. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Here's, here's something that can help you with this. If you're honest enough about it. Now, I, Becky and I, we do this between us. But, you know, if you're not married, maybe you can't do that. But find somebody that, that, that they're, they got hope. Amen. And just say, hey, encourage me. I need hope. Because you can instill hope in somebody. Now, they got to carry it, but you can give it to them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you tonight. Thank you for this wonderful time together. Lord, I thank you right now that we're expecting great things. We're expecting great things. I'm expecting, Father, for you to work mightily in every person in this building, far beyond their own expectations. I expect you, Father, to work mightily in this church, far beyond even what I could expect. I expect you to do more in this shreveport Bossier area than we could ever imagine. You're a great God, and I thank you, God, our Father, that you work mightily, far above anything we ever ask, think, or dream. Highest hopes. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn around and hug somebody. Tell them that you love them. If you're a guest... Please stop by the guest center. We'd love to meet you and greet you. God bless you.